0.0775, returning to a site um, we, that we've been back to a couple of times to add batteries. The in original installation was two sets of arcs, then it was he wanted to add six more, and then he said, give me another six more. So unfortunately the bus bars changed color. So. Um, and then Arc Lithium, of course, if you've seen, we're, they have a new battery called a Gigastack that I'm excited about because I've been talking with the owner, James Mass, for a couple of years now and just providing feedback. We've been using these batteries for four years. They have been flawless. We love them. And so the improved battery with closed loop communication is a stackable battery, kind of taking some of the features of this battery, the same balancing, the same BMS, the same cells, but going to a different form factor of casters and stackable without a rack. So this is, you know, kind of like a home grid, but without the extra relays and controllers and still having casters to move it around. So I'll be showing you that. So the cool thing is I could put a giga stack and parallel with this because it's the same chemistry, same battery, same BMS, I'll, but I'll have closed loop communication controls through the Gigastack. We'll be talking about that. So yes, first thing you're going to say, workspace violation. You got that right. Um, we, there's plans to change this and put in another building, another way to do this so to make this safer because I know this wouldn't pass. So anyway, um, we're going to fix that, so before you start yelling at me, um, it's an, a, a marvelous system. It works fantastic. The solar is 800 feet away, and it's just cooking. There's so many loads and homes here. This thing is working flawlessly, but we got some work to do here to make this safer. So anyhow, loving it. And we're also building a system, and I'm going to take you to a system on this customer's barn that was too far away to feed with this system it's like a whole other piece of property and I'll take you to that and show you what we're doing there so phase two for us is to we're putting a solar system on this shop so this is a separate system separate meter separate everything too far from the other system and so there's a lot going on down here with this building and living quarters and greenhouses and fun stuff so there was an existing t indoor 12k solark with a couple of stores batteries that was running a light bulb very sad i don't know what happened there um so we ended up uh, rewiring the solar that existing solar disconnected that solar put a 15k in here with the 200 amp pass through the meter base is there there's a disconnect that we've added and so now with the 15 K's things change with a 15 K compared to a 12 it's just the way to go if you have any type of grid and I'm coming to the point where I'm just installing 15 K's and hardly any 12 K's and they just do so much more more capability more solar more everything and the pass-through has been the beauty Having the ability to take and pass through 200 amps changed solar for us two years ago, a year and a half ago. How, whenever I put my first 15K in. So in here's our little mech room. It's got a very low ceiling, so I've got to watch myself. So more are the ARC 100s and a 15K, a bypass, and room for a future 15K if he keeps growing, which he is... He's going to. <laughs> so we're adding a, I think what they're working on right now is um, a feed to the greenhouse from this system. So we have some, we're gonna run some eights down there and have a 30, 40 amp circuit going down to the greenhouse from this location, as well as running this house, this building, which also has a sub panel. So um, we took this existing solar down. Well, you can't really see it too well. But it's down there. I'll show you that later. So in order to get these in here, the guys are running rigid to a box. From that box, it goes to the solar array, and that greenhouse is going to get powered. So um, I got a feeling he's going to want to expand the solar at some point, and that can easily be done at a future date. We got a big enough pipe to run in. Uh, another 
set of conductors to fill the last MPPT. So that's it so far. We should hopefully wrap this up today and I'll give you a final rundown of phase two solar. I'm not able to show you the progression of this project as much as usual because I was out of town at a NABCEP conference up in Raleigh and the guys roughed this system in last week before the ring set in. They did an awesome job and so when I showed up today I got to do what I like to do is wire up the inverters and bypass and and I got the easy part of the job this time. <laughs> so I took advantage of that and went to the solar conference and learned all the boring new codes. I mean the exciting new codes that are coming down the pike for battery storage, fire codes, all sorts of things. So if, um, if it keeps going, we'll never be able to install a battery again going to be ridiculous. So that wasn't fun, but got to catch up with a lot of folks at NABCEP in Raleigh, North Carolina. And, but then we've got, we had like three jobs we got to wrap up and this is one of them. So I got to come back, wire up the inverter and check everything. And I had the easy, easy day for me. Uh, guys did all the heavy lifting. And so we're up and running. We got a new plant and uh, this is a repeat customer so we like we love phase two customers and he might even have a phase three for us to do and so we just this is on his barn and shop so it's a 15k typical standard system for us 15k bypass don't ever put one of these systems in without that right there 200 amp bypass and the 200 amp disconnect is out at the meter and uh, he asked for some accessory some extra circuits and so Willis is finishing up landing some circuits back in the panel there was a circuit out to the greenhouse he ran there was a system here but it wasn't very good and we re uh, we just repurposed the solar and put in our standard 15k which is a lot of what we do right lately it's it's really hard to install 12k anymore unless it's purely off-grid because the 15k offers that pass-through capability that you just can't beat so anyway we're going to button this up do some little bit of wire management in the gutter i love the willis hooked me up with a whole bunch of burndy uh, uh power distribution blocks thanks dennis so dennis from um gray bar hooked us up so we have a we're well stocked and sometimes they're overkill um, for landing a generator, but it's just like we've standardized to one PDB that can basically stack up to 15 or four 15Ks and as much generator connections as you need to make. So, and they have the nice covers. I know you guys have caught me before without putting covers on them. I, even though the gutter gets covered up, we have nice covers in there now. We're protecting anyone from getting lit up on the PDBs. They have their inspection ports so you can still check voltage and stuff. All right, we're gonna button this baby up, put some labels on it, and we got an inspection called in for tomorrow. We're gonna go, after we commission this, we gotta check on a couple other jobs. Always generator issues. It's probably the biggest problem we run into is Generac generators and just generator controls and all that fun stuff so we got to go look at a system so i'll show you the solar that we uh repurposed for this job so somebody built a couple of little ground mounts i know there's a missing panel up here <laughs> so we repurposed this we've got two strings of eight on that array they're like 260 watt anyway what's out here is 8.85 kilowatts it's not even close to half of what the 15k can take but it was here he wanted to use it we repurposed it and we just rewired it there was an indoor 12k here that has been removed um, so we just came in and added our disconnects wired the two arrays together got it uh, two sets of eights two sets of seven so it's doing really well doing well we'll probably be back at some point to add some more solar to it but now we've got power customers happy we've got power to his chicken coop power to the greenhouse all sorts of power so if you wanted some electricity in here and so we're powering this panel now that has a variety of breakers and then this we're probably going to put this system in the cabin 
that is phase three. So as you can see, there's power in here. I don't know why we have it on, but we'll turn that off. Okay, so he's got power to run fans and do what he wants to do in here. So that's it, so cool. So wrapping up another system. I know you see a lot of this as it looks, it's, um, it's getting quite repetitive. But I wanted to show enough variation on our channel so that if you felt like you could tackle or you were worried about tackling your DIY system, there's probably enough footage, I hope, that you can find a system on my channel that looks like your place <laughs> that would work electrically for you. And if, you're, if not, you're probably really close to one that we've already done. So if you need help, I can um, help you with that. We have a consultation service you can sign up for on our website and um, you'll have our, my undivided attention to design your system, produce uh, electrical one line, permit package, whatever you need to get your project done. We can provide uh, all the materials, inverters and batteries and ground mounts and all the littles we call them. Everything from the MC4 connectors on a solar array to the PV wire to the disconnects and all this you know, all this UL rate, rated stuff and DC rated versus AC rated, it's important. We see a lot of systems out there that just using whatever they can get their hands on for things like disconnects, but they're not, they're not rated for the usage. And so there's a lot of danger, dangerous things going on. So I think I'm going to point out more code violations when I run into them. Um, as I'm learning the code, our electrician is great. He loves studying the NEC. He must be weird, but he's uh, he's proud of his his great scores on all of his tests. And so I've learned a lot from Willis. And um, so he keeps me he keeps me out of trouble. And we try to stay code compliant on everything. And um, uh, he likes to say, if you show up and it looks bad, there's probably a lot of problems with the system. So we try to make the systems look neat. Sometimes it can't be perfectly neat depending on where we have to stick the equipment. So if I can start from scratch and do a new construction, then we can, you know, we'll, we will throw all the bells and whistles and have nice painted backgrounds and color coordinated mechanical rooms and batteries matching inverters. But I don't have that luxury a lot. So um, when I can, I will. All right. If you need help, let me know. We'd be happy to help you. And I think I've covered everything on this system. This is a repurposed solar phase two for a customer that we've already put a very large system on. But he needed power for some of his uh, other buildings, apartments, greenhouses, chicken coops. And that's what this system was about. So, um, again, thank you for watching. Uh, I've never said it before. I'm going to say it on this one. It's kind of weird. Please like and subscribe. Is that pretty cheesy or what?